Good evening. Welcome to the Wareham Conservation Commission meeting of Wednesday, May 17th, 2023. The Wareham Conservation Commission will hold a meeting under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and or the Town of Wareham Wetlands Protection Bylaw Division 6 and any other applicable laws on Wednesday, May 17th at 2023 at 6.30 p.m. All matters listed may involve a discussion and possible vote. All hearings of the Massachusetts of the Wareham Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act and the Town of Wareham Wetlands Protection by Law Division 6. Although a single de decision of this commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. Um, we have a continuations for um, 10 River Terrace, Pinehurst Beach Association, and Shackley at 19 over Jordan. And with the uh, approval of the uh, commission, first, can we, I missed this last time. Tell us who's here. Uh, Kwame Barty. Sandy Slavin. Carol Melanson. Jessica Parr. Joshua Faraday. Thank you. Is anybody online? We have two people online. Uh, unless this phone number is Denise, I'm not sure. Tom Lewis is one of them with Tech Associates. Oh, okay. Um, do you have the ability to change your name from a phone number? So um, I, I'm calling in on the phone line, so I, I don't think I can do that. I gotcha. Okay. Um, Denise is not available right now. So if we were to take um, the amended order of conditions out of line, we would not have a quorum. Correct. So let us go with our first hearing tech associates they are online correct yep okay yes tech associates. i'm here okay this is a request for determination of applicability for tec <laughs> associates 40 mechanic street south portland maine 01406 to perform vegetation management set forth in Massachusetts Rights of Way Management Regulation 30, 333 CMR 1100 and approved vegetation management VMP located on the census map 99, lot 1046, Wareham, Mass. Is there anybody here representing this project? Identify yourself. This is Tom Lewis with Tech Associates. I'm here um, for the Mass Coastal Railroad. Okay. Tom, would you like to present this? Do you want me to have, would you like to present to us what you're planning to do? Sure, I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, just as a little bit of background, um, so railroads in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, they um, take undertake vegetation management under the rights of way regulations, which is 333 CMR 1100. And that's administered by the Department of Agricultural Resources. As part of that, they have to have a vegetation management plan approved, um, which has been done. Uh, that was done actually two years ago. And then the other part of that regulatory process is we have to go to every municipality and submit a request for, a request for determination for an approval of the boundaries of the resource areas for wetlands and water supplies. So that's why I'm here tonight. Uh, I submitted my RDA application, and last week, Josh and I um, spent a few hours out in the field going through looking at the marking system out on the railroad tracks um, all the way from the Rochester town line down to um, Cohasset Narrows, uh, where we cross into Bourne. Um, so hopefully you've had a chance to, to look at that, and maybe Josh can offer some input. Thank you. Josh, your turn. Yep, so we took a ride down the uh, right away. We identified the spots where they were able to spray and where they were uh, had to stop their spraying. Uh, I'm in agreement with all the delineations and my recommendation would be a negative five. Negative five. Questions on the board, Jessica? No questions. Errol? No questions. Kwame? 
Uh, no questions, thank you. Sandy, I have none. Is there anybody here who would like to co comment on this project? Seeing none. I move that we close the hearing. Second. I have a motion and second to close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero zero. I move that we, is it accept this? Negative five. Okay, I, I move that we accept this project with a negative five determination. Yes. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you opposed to abstain? Is Jess, is Denise on the line yet? She is yes. now. Okay. Uh, so this vote was 4-0-0. I'd like to make a note in the minutes that uh, Denise joined us when? Looks like uh, 636. 630, 635? Six, yeah, 636, 635. Okay. And we have been requested to take the uh, amended order of conditions out of order. Uh, so we are going to bring up the 124 Minot Ave. I understand that Denise is online, so that makes five of us. And Jessica? You're going to, you'll have to leave the table. That's fine. Okay, and at, at 6.37, Jessica has left the table as we're calling up the project for 124 Minded Ave. Is there anybody here representing that project? Yes, uh, Greg Drake from Outback Engineering. Okay, let me just make a note. 7, 6.37, Jessica left. Okay, and sorry, I'm, I was thinking of something else and I missed your name. Sorry. Could you My name? Yes. Yeah, one more time. Okay, it's Greg uh, Drake from Outback Engineering. Okay. Now, would you like to discuss the changes you're requesting? Sure, we can uh, uh, briefly go over it. Uh, <laughs> We uh, we briefly went over everything at the April 5th meeting. Um, and basically we're uh, changing the uh, wall in the back and removing about 60 feet of it. Hold on, Mr. Drake. Okay. Like you're muted. Is that better? Yep, yes. you're back. Okay. All right, uh, we uh, basically it was discussed at the April 5th meeting that uh, we were gonna change the wall and grade into the, um, um, into the riverfront area and, uh, and change the footprint, a minor change to the footprint of the building that was originally proposed. And there he brought it up there. And basically, um, 60 feet, linear feet of the wall is being removed, and we're grading a, approximately 1,778 square feet of, uh, of the roof front area will be disturbed. And that's about 2.6% of the entire river front area on the property, which is less than the 10% that, that may be allowed by the commission if there's no uh, major impact to the uh, river front area. Um, so, and we are also requesting a, uh, the order be extended for a three years as well, as it was uh, issued in June of 2019, and we'd like to extend it, because it will expire um, in September of uh, 2023. So I can open up to any questions you may have. Josh. Yep, so I'd agree. Um, the alteration within the riverfront area is under the exempt amount of alteration that is allowed per the site. And um, the expiration date on the order of conditions was uh, extended due to the COVID tolling. So that's, that's why it doesn't add up with when it was originally, uh, originally issued. But, other than that, I think we discussed this at our uh, a couple of meetings ago, and there's really no other comments for me. Questions, Carol? No questions at this time. Kwame? No questions, thank you. Denise? 
No questions at this time. Why are we why are we removing the 60 feet of wall? Is it that you've just modified it or thought you found out you didn't need it? Yeah, we modified it and uh, we didn't we're not changing the uh, we kept it there where it is uh, up against close to the uh, 30 foot no touch. So we're not changing any of it there. But by removing that, it's a very tall wall. It's at least five feet tall. So it just, you know, it's, it saves money, but it also, um, you know, with that large wall there, it, it could stop wildlife from going or wildlife would have to go around it, you know, so it, it makes it a little more easier, a better backyard. Um, Anybody here to comment on this project? Is it still five feet though, isn't it? But it's just not as big as it used, long as it used that, to be. That's right, it's not running along that whole back. Originally it was running along the whole back behind the, behind the house, the uh, duplex. Are we gonna put up signs saying no touch area? You uh, we, we can. Because we are uh, asking that the projects have identification to say no activity beyond this 30 foot point. So they're, you know, uh, what, four by four squares that can be paste, put on a post or something just to put it across the property so that people will know that, hey, you can't go digging beyond this point. Yep, we can add that. You can make that part of the conditions if you So we can do an amended want. order of conditions for this new plan plus the um, identification of the 30-foot um, no activity zone. So anybody would like to take a, how about closing the, we I'm didn't have, no, we didn't have it. Did we have a hearing? No, we didn't open the hearing, did we? I can't remember. Yeah. Okay, we opened a hearing. Now we have to close the hearing. I move that we close the hearing. Oh, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Denise, thank you. Four zero zero. Now, a motion, please. What should the motion be? The motion that we accepted amended order of condition based on the plan submitted on. I'm trying to find the date. Yeah, I don't have one. May, uh, May 3rd. May 1st. May 1st, yeah. 5 1. Okay, I move that we accept an amended order of conditions um, for the new plan submitted May 1st. 2023 and um, signage and signage for the no 30 foot no touch boundary be installed as well plus a three-year extension on the order of conditions and a three-year extension of order of conditions I believe those are the three components that be it that's the motion uh, second all in favor Carol aye, aye. Kwame aye Denise aye Sandy, yes, four zero zero. Thank you. I had to take a roll call because we have someone on okay. Zoom. That's right. Sorry. We're done on this one. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Jessica, you can come back in. At uh, six forty-eight. Jessica has returned. Uh, Denise, will you be continuing to join us? Um, I actually need to leave the meeting if you have quorum. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Okay. Have a nice evening. You too. All right. We're now down to... Next one, notice of intent for Susan Jackson. I believe that's our next one. Yes. Uh, request for a notice of intent for Susan A. Jackson. JC Engineering, 2854 Cranberry Highway, East Wayham, Mass, 02538, to construct a carport within a 100-foot buffer to border, bordering vegetation wetland and within, and within wetland, subject to coastal storm uh, flowage and construct of, of a, <coughs> excuse me, a roof over an existing porch located on the census map 21, lot 1001, 198 Great Neck Road, Wayham, Mass.
Sorry, wait a minute. I lost track of where I am. And who's here representing this project? Uh, good evening. Uh, Brad Bertolo with JC Engineering on behalf of the property owner. Uh, the house, uh, the existing property at 198 Great Neck Road contains a single family dwelling set towards the rear of the property, has a couple decks um, on either side of the property, accessed by a stone driveway that crosses. Uh, I guess two, two separate wetlands that are connected by a pipe under the driveway. Uh, the applicants would like to construct a carport uh, to this structure. And there's really not too much space on the property except for roughly where we have it shown. Um, we are proposing a 22 by 28 uh, roofed carport that will be uh, connected just to the front side of the existing deck that's attached to the house. And at the same time, they'd like to add a roof over that deck so they'd have a uh, covered entry from the uh, carport to inside the house. There's, there's a door in the front and a door on the side. That's the reason why that porch is uh, that long on the side of the house. Uh, very minimal grade changes are proposed. Uh, all the work's taken place within either crushed stone driveway, uh, some grass lawn, and uh, there's a small little concrete walkway uh, that's kind of right in the dead center of the proposed carport. Uh, we are proposing erosion control methods around the limit of work, and uh, whatever's disturbed beyond the footprint of the carport or driveway will be restored back to what's there today, which is uh, all grassed area. Josh? Yep, so I mean a site visit. All the work is outside of the 30 foot no disturb. Uh, it's within an already altered area. Uh, my only recommendation was that we add a um, dry well. Uh, when I was out on the site, the applicant had mentioned that he might want to uh, capture that, the water from the, the roof and the carport. Uh, capture it in some type of rain barrels to use it to water his property. Um, my only hesitation with uh, doing that instead of the dry well is if he ever moves away, someone might not want to maintain the, the rain water collection system. Uh, with that being said, if he installed the dry well, you could probably add some type of overflow device to allow it to go into a rain uh, capture system. So. I think having the drywall there just secures that it, it's installed now. Uh, there is a large tree that the applicant would like to um, keep, uh, would like to not remove uh, if the carport can be built without removing it. So, but it probably looks like that would need some trimming on that side. So. Uh, my recommendation is the approval with the condition of adding a dry well. Okay. Jessica. No questions. questions. Carol. No questions. Thank you. Cormie. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of the things I was going to ask is the uh, rain capture uh, with the dry well. But you, know, you beat me to it. So. Um. I thought Denise. I she's gone. Denise is gone. Okay. I was thinking, you're going to have a dry well at what point? You're going to have a, a, a roof over the deck, and then you'll have the carport. To me, where were you planning to put the dry wells? Yeah, so I had, I had spoken to Josh earlier this, this week, and he had mentioned um, that that would be, you know, probably wanted. So that's, we have no issues doing that. Um, I don't know the design of the carport, if it will have gutters, but an equivalent option would be to capture the existing roof gutters and it's at least an equivalent size of what we're doing so that we have, you know, X amount of square feet of roof being captured that's equal to, you know, whatever's proposed on this site, you know, 
22 by 28 plus the approximately six foot wide porch, which is about 37 feet long and, and on the side and 22 feet across the front. Does the house ex have gutters now? I don't, I don't recall, but I think it's set up that it could. Does it? I think it does. Then it's possible that you could redirect <coughs> the runoff from the gutters into a rain barrel if he wants to retain the water for lawn, lawn yeah. use yep. and allow the dry wells to exist permanently as opposed to taking, you know, using them sometimes and not using them other times, switching off to a, a hose that goes to a rain barrel. But if he was to c capture what's coming off his house now, he has that built in rain barrels. He does, yes. So you know, he's got gutters coming down and rain spouts coming down, just redirect the rain spouts into a rain barrel. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's an option. I think the concern was with added roof area, what yeah. a roof drywall might make sense in at least to capture anything that's, that's new. I would be concerned about a dry well close to the side wetlands that you'll be adding a lot more water to that place that already collects water. I'd probably keep it uh, out in front of the north of side the of the carport where okay, the grade is the from, highest. Yeah, away from the existing low yep. point that is yep. right now a major mosquito breeding ground. Yeah, you don't want to add more water to that. So just be careful where you do put your dry wells to give yourself a better um, separation from the wetlands. Yeah. So there's wetlands here. I'm worried about the driveway, where the carport's going. Well, it's right over a driveway, driveway that already, no, it's a stoned, here's the stone driveway. Okay. Is the driveway going to remain stone? Yeah. Okay. Is there any other comment? I ask, yes. Anybody in the audience who'd like to speak to the project, please come forward and identify yourself. One of you. Hi, my name is Jennifer McNally. I live at 200 Arm Way Neck Road. Yeah, here's the other Well, she'll sit down in a minute and reintroduce herself. All right. Jennifer McNally, 200 R Great Neck Road. Thank you. Get that, Bob? Yes. Okay, thank you. Where will the dry well be placed? because we do have a problem with water in front of all of these properties, yes. one being ours. Um, and this is what we're discussing right now. We were thinking on the northern component of the um, carport. So in, directly in front of the house? Directly in front of the house. Yes. And if you're looking at the house to the left side of the house. Okay. Yeah, I know I north out there. That's, a, that's where the highest see grade where, is down. See where he's pointing? You'd be putting, see where the carport is coming in? Yep. So it would be in that area up there that the dry well would be placed up in that area, which is the tallest tallest point on the lot. On the lot. And I don't know about, I know nothing about dry wells. Where does this empty out? It just, just disperses into the soil, under the ground. Think about a pit of stone. Mm -hmm and it'll just go into that, and then just sort of d disperse out. Okay. It will, won't be exposed. I'm not worried about no. the exposure. I'm worried about no. more water being yeah, well, trapped in front of these properties. I mean, the water, if we don't put a dry well, the water will go off the roof all over the place. Dry well directs the water to a particular location that will seep down and disperse in the soil underground. Okay. Does that answer your question on it? Did I do it well, right? Now I gotta research what a dry well is, but I'll do that later. <laughs> but we are recommending for most everything coming for us that there is a dry well so it does direct the runoff from the structures to a defined location as opposed to puddling all over the place. Okay, well, would it be possible to see the final plan for this dry well before it's done? There's no... Um. So Brad will have to give me a revised plan of the location of the dry well before I can give him the approval paperwork. I don't mean to uh, seem extreme, but we've had so much water out there that the ducks swim in our driveway. So anything starts getting altered out there in front of these houses, it's a problem. It's a I, very I would say the dry well is 
proper mitigation for the addition of the carport. You you should see no difference in what's happening. In the, in the, the project. water that's being captured in the low lying area. I mean, it it probably Just won't. After reviewing the plan, the the street grade it appears to be higher in elevation than the low point of the driveway, which is where the drain pipe is. So we have uh, drainage flow away from the street on our, from our driveway. So uh, anything that currently flows on this driveway now appears to flow kind of towards the wetlands, which is away from the street. Into that ditch in the and front of the yard, yeah, ditch in front of the yard, which passes out underneath the road into Lillier Island, right? Is it Lillier? But that's out to where the new new homes are going. Oh, uh, yeah, I just, yeah. just I don't think it's po causing any. No, but I'm trying. Hit. I'm trying to picture there is a water ditch, so to speak, natural drainage ditch in the front of this property between Great Nick and the house. And that water flows out under the road, out into, oh, out to the, out to Shell the Road. Road. Yes, the up bay. To yes, well, yeah. eventually, yes, out into Shell Point. Yes. And that's, and that's up oh, oh, but, oh, if you're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to come forward. I'm not gonna continue a discussion across the thank table. You. So, but thank you very much. Do you still want to see the plan? Yeah, only. Be, yeah. All right then. All right. Water. Anybody else? Yeah. And I will be at the table before I say anything else. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Alan Savory, 200 Great Neck Road. The original 200. I was going to say Savory. Nice okay. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Our, our only concern is that a number of years ago, somebody on that property had messed with the wetlands in the front and partially filled it in, and nobody knew about it. And the water doesn't flow exactly the way it used to. So we're just worried about anything that might disturb that area any further mm -hmm. and cause new problems. And like Jen said, if a well's in a spot where it disperses, fine, that's cool. But you know, as long as it's going with the flow or something, you know that, again, we don't have adverse effects from more water. Okay. Um. Josh, is it possible we continue, continue this to the next hearing so we have an actual plan that shows the location of the dry wells to satisfy the questions? Well, I think it might help if we just back up a little bit um, because Brad had brought up that the carport might not support uh, a gutter system. So we wouldn't be capturing the water from the new carport. Okay. His alternative is to capture you know, equal to or maybe even more rainwater that's hitting the house into a dry. Oh, well. okay. So it's, it's, we're not going to increase any surface water runoff. Yes, there's water runoff now from the existing roof that's not being uh, okay. captured. I'm adding uh, whatever the size is, let's say 600, maybe 700 square feet of roof. I'll make <coughs> sure I capture at least 700 so square feet. The roof over the deck will have a dry well. Uh, in, well, in some of the house as well. Existing would, house. Right. So I'm, I'll capture it e at least equal amount of new impervious coverage, new roof coverage. So whatever runoff's there today will be the same after it's built. It just, it might be coming from a different. So by adding the, the dimensions of the carport, you will make sure that that is inc increased runoff is captured from the house. So the net effect is no new water, rainwater going directly onto the ground. Is that understanding? It's a wash. Yeah. We will capture it. Yes. Yeah. Equal to or potentially more. Okay. Yeah. And so somewhere down the line, is there any chance of giving this guy a rain barrel, maybe in the back of the house? If, if it's he up wants to him to. as to what he wants to do for his gutter, but but we would have to restrict the order of conditions to say that certain amount of rain from the roof must go to a dry well. That has to be our condition. So I think if he did want to capture rain in a rain barrel system, mm -hmm. it would be him adding some connect connection to the existing gutter that would then bypass the dry well and go right into the rain barrel garden system. Uh, but that way, if let's say he moves, 
the system is there for the dry the rain barrel system to be cut off and for it to go directly into the dry well all right then so. especially in the winter when you remove your rain barrel right you would yeah you yes. would change that connection and it would so we need the, the well. Uh, dry well so actually you would be cut, capturing more rain going into the dry well and it would be then what would actually run off on the lawn currently right and it would be the dry well would be further away from the wetland system um i don't think we need to continue to just see the location of the dry well because i don't think brad wants to put it anywhere it's self of i'm not gonna put it itself up after looking at it i'll probably end up putting something in behind the house uh to capture some of the back roof and then something in the front capture some of the front roof And then those can be set up where it gets directed to the dry well first with an overflow system into a rain barrel. So and that would that would be, that would be easy so that the if the homeowner can do that. The rain barrel disappears, the dry well's still there. Okay. So I'm um, sorry, the, uh, real quick question. Two hundred is you're sitting in a the the house is here, uh, that's gonna get the work and you're sitting in the back, right? In front of the we're sitting right next to it because when they rebuilt the house, they put it like this close to our yard. Yeah, right. Right. Because I was there on uh, Tuesday and I saw a house, you know, in the back. And there's a house that's going to get the work. And then, so your 200 is right here, right? Yeah, we're, we're gene directly the next one down. Oh, I got you. Yes. Okay. Yep. Anybody other comment? So, um, Close the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. The hearing is closed. Um, when we do the uh, acceptance, uh, this is a request for an RDA. Part of our motion should be that a dry well be added and that Josh reviews the plan adjustment, uh, the change to the plan, and he has the authority to accept the plan with the dry well indicated so they don't come back to us for another hearing? Uh, yes, it is a notice of intent, though. Right. Oh, yep. Yep. why do I say in? Oh, it is, sorry. Notice of intent, so we can put requirements on it. The requirement will be a dry well with uh, right. Mr. Flaherty having the final a review and approval of the modified plan. So someone makes a motion, please. So moved. Oh. <laughs> Standard order of conditions plus this one. Um, motion in the second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Zero, zero. All set? Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, we have Continued hearings. We do. We have a request by uh, Corkley for continuance until 6 7. Moved continue until 6 7. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. It's continue. We have a request for continuance for Pinehurst Speech Association so until 6 7. Motion to continue till 6 7. Second. All in second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Zero, zero. We have a motion for Shackley uh, to continue until 6 7. So moved. Oh, we have a motion and a second? I have, I'm waiting for a second. Oh, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I have a motion and a second to continue until 6 7. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 4 zero, zero. We are continued until 6 7 for those three. Oh. It's going to be a long meeting. I, I, I did. <laughs> yeah. We'll be home in time for tip off. Okay. <laughs> it's up to you now. We're into certification of yes. compliance request. It's yours now. Mr. Lockwood is here. Good evening, Bill Lockwood, Lockwood Architects. Um, I think for the for all three of these. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This seems to be a trouble with that mic, or is it me? Yeah, it's a little muffled. He's. You, can you hear me? It's very. It's a funky, muffly sound. Muffled. Hello. Hello. 
Back it up a little. Low. Test. About six inches. <laughs> it's about six, six inches. inches. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we'll just start down the line here. Uh, 32 Robin Wood. Um, my recommendation would be the issuance of the certificate of compliance. Uh, my only concern was is the house has a gated front entrance that I wasn't able to get through. So I couldn't do a actual site inspection, but from all of our aerial images, it appears to be in accordance with the original plan. So. Yeah. yeah, the project was a garage addition to the existing house uh, with a um, some connective uh, pavement work. Um, and been, been done for a while, been waiting for a, a plan. Little chilly and windy down there, huh? I didn't make it down there. <laughs> and I actually went yesterday when it was a lot nicer. Uh, yeah. So there be, that's three, I need a motion. So moved. A second, and a second. Somebody second. Somebody second it. I'll second. Thank you. A motion, all except, <laughs> all in favor, four zero zero, certification of our compliance done. Okay, next one, please. Uh, so the next one is 15 Granston Way. Um, that? Oh, right there. So, um, my recommendation is the issuance of a certificate of compliance. He was approved for this, uh, the, extens the existing bar and addition, uh, which appears to be built in compliance with the order of conditions. Move that we issue the certificate of, of a certificate of compliance. I have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. Next one, please. And the final one. I do want to pull up the plan on this one. This is 19 Nobsco Way. Um, the project was. Jump in for me. Um, pull this up. The thrust of that project was to uh, put some breakaway walls uh, um, b below the first floor level um, with the, on the same footprint. It also necessitated um, a re reworking of uh, the stairway, and that's been done for quite a, quite a while now. They're just kind of catching up with the paperwork on this one. Is that why we got all three from you at the same time catching up? What's that? That's why we got three from you at the same time. You figured I'm going to be uh, the one It actually winds up being coincidental that they, uh, that the, I finally got the plans from, um, I think, was it, th yeah, th uh, um, two different surveyors. Okay, yeah. so. Um, uh, so what we've modified here is a change in the stairway. So it was the stairway and the breakaway walls around the, the house, which, both are in compliance with the order of conditions. Uh, my only concern about this, this uh, property was the addition of the aluminum fence that was not permitted. That's uh, this large area here. Um, after talking to the homeowners when I went on my site visit, they were in uh, conversations with Dave before he left about the construction of the fence and where it could be located uh, to get approval. Dave and the applicant came up with this proposal. Uh, they came up with some uh, modifications to the fence to allow wildlife to pass underneath it. They just didn't get it permitted. So um, my recommendation is uh, issue the certificate of compliance for the work and then the issue a fine of $200 for doing work that would have been approved but without a permit. Did they indicate why they needed a fence when it's going to allow wildland underneath it? So, or they just have a big dog that won't go under the fence? They have a large dog, and um, <clears throat> their reason for not getting it permitted was the homeowner broke her leg, and they had to get it in because she could no longer take the dog for walks. So, again, it, I believe this project would have been permitted. Mm -hmm. It just. It wasn't, so that's the recommendation of the $200 fine. 
which the applicant is aware of. The app they are aware of it. That was going to be my question. Thank yep. you. Yep, we had a discussion about it. They they had no problem with it. So how do we make a motion on that one? We make a motion to issue the certification of compliance um, with a $200 fine for doing work prior to approval. Okay. Is that right? Yep. I move that we issue the certificate of compliance with the addition of a $200 fine for doing work that was not permitted. That would have been approved had it been brought before us. So that the, the order of conditions, certification for the building and the stairways and stuff, and then the fence is the second activity that occurred. That's, shall we, we have a motion. Second. I have a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Zero, zero, we're done. Yep, the final thing is uh, minutes. Did you ever Thank send you all. them out? Have a good evening. Thought Thank you, too. Did anybody? I don't. <coughs> I don't remember I seeing don't the minutes. I remember seeing them either. Uh, let's see. All right, well then let's forget about the minutes and I'll make it's sure they get out at the next hearing. That's it. Okay, um, we have, I have here, I sent out a while ago um, Word document regarding our fine schedule. Denise spent some time and reformatted it and it reorganized it in an Excel spreadsheet. Oh. Excel. So I want to wait until Denise hears to t here to talk about it, but I thought I'd pass it out. And I'd like to put that on the next agenda, please, uh, the format for our fine, our commission fines. I eventually want to put it on the uh, town, on our website, but we want to make sure we're using the format as best, as discussed in here. Perfect, I'll add it as a discussion for our next year. Okay, so there you go, you have that. Uh, we'll have the minutes for April 19th. <coughs> we wanted to, we started talking about the format for the minutes and uh, I wanna wait in for Denise to be here, so if you could add that to our next agenda, <coughs> the format for our minutes. Are they transcriptions or are they a summary of activity uh, minutes? I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Um, yes. Um, we have, why can't I find what I'm looking for? Bear with me a second. Um, Michael and Carol have uh, indicated they are interested in, in continuing to be members of the Conservation Commission. I would like to have a discussion, then vote for a, um, to recommend them for reappointment, but, but um, I, I need that from the commission before I can go to the selectmen with our recommendations. So any discussion about Michael or Carol being reappointed to conservation? Yes, please. All right, I need a motion. We can take them both at the same time. Okay. I need a motion to uh, re recommend reappointment for Michael and Carol. Make a motion for uh, Michael and Carol to continue their uh, goodies. To the, uh, <laughs> I knew Sorry. I was going to come down to the floor. Sorry, food. I have to say. <laughs> and a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I don't get to vote. Oh, well, You Aye. can vote if you want. Aye. Michael. Denise. Huh? Denise. I'm, not Michael. Michael. Michael, Michael. yes, yeah, so I get to vote. make a vote Aye. for Michael. Yep. I'm doing the two of you together, so it's all four zero zero. So I will write a letter. I don't think I've done this before. No, I didn't do this before, did I? I don't remember seeing it on the last digit. I will write a letter to the selectmen requesting your reappointment. I have sent the two of you the documents you need. No, I'm not, I'm pointing to where Michael <laughs> Did you send it today? <laughs> yes, it's this afternoon. <laughs> okay, okay, that's why I so, haven't seen it. Uh, you both need, Michael and Carol, you have the document, you have to fill out the application because you have to reapply and I sent you the connection to open meeting law, which has to be um, retaken, right? Retaken, and the certification that you signed off saying I did it has to be included with your app your application for reappointment. Okay, so we do this before we go before the board of selectmen. You won't go before the board of selectmen. Oh, we don't have to go you, again. No, until you're done, you do it first. More than likely, they may not call you for reappointment. Oh, okay. 
they don't normally call a reappointment up. Oh, okay, good. But they want the paperwork. But they want the paperwork, so yeah. just get it done sometime. It has to go on the agenda, but they may not invite you to attend. Okay. Autumn is on the agenda to be appointed as a full member on June 6th. It was delayed because Nicole forgot to send in her formal resignation to the BOS and clerk, and that got delayed, that delayed Autumn's appointment up. Um, minutes formats, vote on that. <coughs> Conservation. <coughs> Anybody have anything else? No, I move that we close the hearing. Oh, no, adjourn. Adjourn the meeting. <coughs> I have a motion to adjourn. It's 7.15. Wow, it's fast. Can I get a second? Second. Amen. Yeah, all in favor. <laughs> aye. Aye, aye, aye. All right, tip off. I, I think I it. come. It's almost like, can I get an amen? <laughs> Thank you.